Yeah. All right, we are here tonight at the Florida Public Library for a community conversation on the, the upcycling and repair of items and how that can help our community. Uh, tonight's community conversation is being sponsored by a grant from the uh, Libraries Transforming Communities branch of the American Library Association. It's a small and rural libraries grant, so we thank them for providing that. Um, the hope is that with the grant money, we could both facilitate tonight's conversation and then also use that money to act on whatever is discussed and whatever thoughts come out of this evening, whether that be purchasing of materials, pursuing programming, whatever it happens to be. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know me, my name is Barrett Angel. I'm the librarian and program coordinator here at the Florida Public Library. Camera can't see me from back here. And, uh... We have a uh, wide variety of individuals here this evening. I know we have many people from the Warwick Repair Cafe, so we thank you for being here. Uh, we do have several members of our board of trustees, Diane Arcieri in the back, and Ron Kamrowski, who was also very nice uh, enough to act as our note taker for the evening, so thank you, Ron. I appreciate that. Uh, it just helps to be able to more easily refer to ideas and not have to run through the video every time. I want to just remind everybody, by the way, uh, again, water and iced tea. And if anybody needs the restroom, you can just head inside, go all the way around the circulation desk, and it's in the little nook next to the children's room if you need it. But our conversation topic tonight, again, uh, repair and upcycling. Um, effectively, the idea that a lot of, not just individuals necessarily, households, even organizations have materials that often go to waste when they don't need to, for whatever that reason might be, whether it be furniture or supplies or other items, a lot of times they are not used to their best capacity after an initial use. And our hope tonight is to come up with some ideas of how, with the combination of the materials that the library has available and could potentially have available in our library of things, combined with the knowledge and expertise of members of the Repair Cafe and other members of our community, we could figure out ways to combine these in order to help facilitate that uh, repair or upcycle of these kinds of items. Um, I've been honestly dealing with upcycled items a lot recently. My parents and I collectively bought a house out in Newburgh, uh, this past November, and we renovated the lower floor, which was mostly a basement, except for the garage portion, into actual livable space. There's a, a TV room and a little kitchenette down there, which is very nice. And the vast majority of the furniture and items that we have down there are recycled and upcycled items that we bought from Habitat for Humanity. They have a store in Newburgh, the Habitat Restore. And uh, they sell items that they have gotten from other people that they repair, clean up, and then resell to help support their mission, which is really very nice. And we even did a little bit of uh, upcycling in our own home. I have a three-shelf bookcase that I have had, if not since I was born, then as long as I can remember, that has followed me from house to house to house. It's like the last thing I have for my original bedroom. And it's really starting to get a little shabby and... My father, who is significantly handier with woodworking than I am, was able to put a new back on it and clean it up and really make it look nice. And now it's in that downstairs sitting area and it's holding my video games. So, you know, I, I personally know, you know how much that upcycling and recycling can mean, um, whether it's just an item that you can make a lot of use out of, but also in instances where items might have sentimental value and might be something that people want to keep around for that sort of a reason. Um, libraries have also been making a lot of use of this sort of thing as well. Of course, we have a library of things which contains a wide array of items that we have available that people can check out to hopefully perform some of these repairs. Um, our tool library being a prominent piece of that. We have every kind of tool you can imagine from hand tools like hammers and screwdrivers to power drills, power saws. Uh, we have clamps, measuring tools, uh, just all kinds of things. I have here people are like well this is the list of the items we currently have available you just feel free to have one there okay if you just pass those back in there thank you and everybody feel free to take one those are the items we currently have available and our hope is that uh as part of this conversation we'll come up with some additional items that we might be able to put the grant money toward to expand that collection uh when i originally came up with this conversation idea and i spoke to uh elizabeth moss who was unfortunately not able to make it tonight she is generally the head of the repair cafe and a lot of the ideas that we were working with was the idea that if we got the appropriate tools and items, then members of the Repair Cafe might be able to use those items to expand their offerings by renting the items, using them for the cafe, and then bringing them back. 
So our hope is that that might be a way in which we can, we can use this. So I have a few questions that I'm hoping we could focus on for maybe 15 minutes each as we go through tonight, come up with some ideas, and then we could try to act on those ideas. Uh, I also have here, and this can be passed around to give everybody an idea, and I apologize if this is a little bit difficult to read. There's a lot of words on here. But this is a um, this is a circulation report that shows the items in our library of things and what has been going out and how much. Um, a lot of the items we have are relatively new, so there are some of them that have not gone out. You'll see anything with a zero in this column hasn't gone out. But we do have a number of items that are going out pretty regularly. Um, some of the ones that are at the very top, notably the video game equipment and the kilowatt usage monitor, we've had those for years before our library of things, which is why their numbers are so much drastically higher than everything else on here. But you can get an idea, um, sort of the categories and general item is indicated here, and then more specifics is in the second column. So feel free to take a look at that and pass it around, and that'll get you some ideas of, at least as far as our patronage goes so far, what has been popular, what people have been looking at. And as we're looking at all this, uh, I'd like to start off with the first question that I have here, and that's kind of trying to discuss what kind of repairs or upcycling do we think uh, are not currently out there that people might be interested in, whether it's repairs that you've heard people ask about that maybe, for example, the cafe hasn't been able to provide because of a lack of materials or the proper tools, uh, whether that's because they're inaccessible or overly expensive, or whether just other kinds of repairs that you yourself or maybe someone in your family has potentially wanted to have done. Um, it's worth knowing this doesn't necessarily have to be limited to what you traditionally think of in this way, like, for example, repolishing or putting a screw into a table or something like that. I know um, Elizabeth mentioned that in some of the repair cafes she's seen, there have been a wide array of possible repairs, even up to things like repairing and restoring old photographs or documents and all kinds of things that you might not necessarily think of with repairs. So um, any ideas that we have for any kinds of repairs, uh, we'll start off with what things are out there that we think, uh, you know, what kind of repairs people are interested in or that we think would be good to provide. And then we'll move on from there and f see how, um, you know, how we can facilitate that. Um, yeah, if you have something to say, I will just ask that the first time you speak, if you could give your name and uh, who you're with, if you're with an organization, just to make Ron's note taking a little easier. And so when the video goes up, people know who's who. And uh, we'll go from there. If you have something, uh, raise your hand and uh, go ahead. You can go first. Joan? Joan Maxwell, Repair Cafe Warwick. To add to your list, maybe I was thinking a moisture meter for people that you know, might have water damages. Test their walls to make sure everything's dry, their floors to make sure everything's dry. Okay. Second item might be a portable sewing machine for people that might need to hem something and don't have yeah. a sewing machine. That especially, because you don't even see those in a lot of stores anymore. <laughs> That's a very fair point. Before June steals another idea. <laughs> <laughs> Are we still on? Oh. Yeah, go ahead. Whoever has an idea, feel free. Go ahead, Nanette. Okay, Nanette Fernow, we're at Cafe Warwick. Um, even though my one idea was stolen. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about, you know, the stand-up mixers that take up so much bulk, the KitchenAid, the, yeah, uh, the... Uh, you know, that you stand up with the paddles. For right, the right. And things of that nature. They're kind of expensive, and people can either afford them or store them in their house. Mm -hmm. So if a holiday comes up and they want to, uh, you know, create confections or whatever. Um, that was one thing, and um, oh, you know what I just came up with in my head right now, which is frightening. Um, a lady came in, two or three people came in looking for watch battery replacements. Mm. There's right. like a, a kit with tools that you can okay. take the back of the watch off and without, you know, not using a steak knife or something. Right, right. And uh, yeah, so maybe a watch repair, a uh, battery uh, replacement kit. That's a great idea. I like that one. Yes, Diane. Hi, Diane Arcieri. Um, um, I was also thinking in, with regard to that, um, I don't know how many of you use the screw, uh, screws in your eyeglasses, so maybe something that, you know, we could do for repair work. I don't know if you could do that now, but eyeglass repair. Just a That's good. Basic yeah. Yeah. yeah, certainly we get some eyeglass repair kits. Yeah. Uh, Lenny Valentino, Repair Cafe at Warwick. 
um, I actually tried to use your thing, library, library of things, mm -hmm. for, to get a glass cutter, mm -hmm. but you don't have it. So I had to go and buy one. Mm. And can I donate this? To the library? Um, if you'd like to, we'd absolutely love to have it. That's very generous of you. Thank this you. This is something I'll use like three times in my life. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yes, thank you. Okay. We'll, we'll have... Uh, the we'll instructions have, we'll, are with it. Great. We'll have our technical services person, Ashley, get a nice bag to put that in, and we can definitely add that. That's excellent. Yeah, I, know, I, I remember when that call came in, because we have a tile cutter, but we didn't have a glass cutter. I have one more. Okay. <laughs> a paper cutter. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. And the reason why I'm saying it is because uh, the Kiwanis Club in Chester does raffle tickets every year to the tune of like 2,000 of them. Wow. And we use scissors. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Eesh. That, that hurts. That's a hand cramp. That's a hand cramp. When can we ask questions to you real quick? Oh, just a moment. First of all, I have one hand behind you, and then we'll get to the questions. We have any more suggestions first, and then we'll go from there. Um, yeah, we have had several go out. I know particularly, um, we've had one person who checked out a number of the different items, a couple of the rakes and I think a shovel and some things like that. So I know some of it has gone out. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, um, definitely, um, something, a, a lot of the gardening items, I, I, it was brought to my attention. I attended the, um, the Warwick, uh, Zoom garden plot, um, I'm on that. yeah, at the last meeting. And I know it was, I know, uh, Michael Helm, who also couldn't be here this evening, made a valid point that. There were um, a lot of the items in our uh, our gardening cafe, things that most gardeners might already have, things like the trowel set and things like that. So um, certainly if there's any items that are something that somebody who's not a regular gardener might not think of, but that might be something a gardener might need for a week, but might not be something they want to go out and buy, that would definitely be something we'd be interested in, in learning about. I know I got a few suggestions from that meeting that we're going to implement. I know a pickaxe was mentioned and a, a few other things. Right. You know, there's... Um people who aren't regular gardeners I don't know if you'd want to get into things like not a regular wheelbarrow but they make those small plastic like tote wheelbarrows I think they sell them over at Warner's probably Something yeah like that pop-up bags um, mm -hmm. you have some rakes there's a lot of different types of specialized shovels mm -hmm. if you want to go into that I can tell you all kinds of specialized shovels okay but there's some things like that you may have people who are um, occasional gardeners mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, regular garden would own everything. Like right. Everything. Yeah, the, the wheelbarrows, if it's something, something like that, it's uh, really, we're happy to take what we can as long as we can get it up and down our basement stairs. That's the only caveat. You know, as long as we can get it down there to store it and bring it up when people want it, you know, we're happy to offer it. So. I'm talking about the plastic ones. Right, right. They're not very heavy. Okay. Well, that's good then. That's always something we can look into. And the other thing, a lot of people need kneeling benches. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a good but, idea. You know. It's not just seniors, but... Well, yeah, I mean, anybody's, you know, you don't want to hurt you. I mean, no matter how old you are, you're liable to hurt your knees if you're down on them too long, yeah, so... there's a lot of knee injuries out there. So Absolutely. Like that might be useful. Okay, excellent. Yes, sir? Uh, Fred from the Warwick Repair Cafe. Uh, I'm, I can give you a list of tools that would fill the library, uh, but I'm going to look at this from myself being a condo owner, mm -hmm. where I don't have a lot of room, because mm -hmm. I was asked to do certain repairs by Elizabeth, that I could have done, except I don't have the room. So things like a folding table, which mm -hmm. would be good, because this way I could take the table for a week, lay it out, do what I have to do on top of the table, bring it back, not having to worry about storing it. Uh, a lot of times you want to cut a piece of wood, but it's hard to hold on to, so you need saw horses, mm -hmm. which are collapsible, don't take up much room, mm -hmm. but they're very handy. Yeah, I have a pair of plastic ones of those in my garage. They're very right, handy. They're, you know, just a couple of ideas. Thinking from uh, lack of room rather than repair necessity, yeah. you know, whether you have the capabilities and your own tools, you still can't do it. Right, that, that's, that's, a, that's a very good perspective to think of that from. I didn't think of that. And the table would make sense even for that perspective, or even if somebody was just, say, having a get-together. We have a pop-up canopy that we rent out. Somebody actually checked that out earlier today. And so, um, even if somebody's just having a party outside and they need a table for something, it's great for that, too. So, a table would definitely go out. Absolutely. Um, as we're going through things, worth mentioning also, um, 
If there's any suggestions for, say, uh, any kind of books or DVDs or materials that would help people learn how to use these items, either to conduct specific repairs or just general usage, that's something also we would love to help expand our collection with and have available so that if people are checking items out, we could have a little thing with the item that says, by the way, if you're looking to learn more about how to use this, here are books in our collection, and they can be directed over there as well. So we're certainly also open to those suggestions as well. Uh, nobody has anything else. You had a question in that? I think you answered it. Well, I was going to ask where all these things are stored. And it's the basement. Yes, we still, we have two um, we have two large uh, cabinets in our basement and also a uh, showing unit that we put up a couple of weeks ago that are uh, holding most of these items down there. We try to keep all the, as much as we can, the tools in one and the other items in another. Mm -hmm. uh, the larger gardening items uh, or the rakes and shovels and things are in a garbage can stick, you know, standing up next to the cabinet. So the girls from the library, like, when you put your order in, they have to go down? Yes, yeah, so whoever is here will have to go down and get the items and then bring it up for you. Um, norm normally, if they're available, um, either one of our pages will run down and get it if they're here, or if I'm here, I'll certainly run down and get it if it makes it easier for everybody. Yeah. So we'll... The, we'll um, uh, Baron, I think it's the best idea ever, this whole thing. Are you the only library that's done it? Um, we are, as far as I'm aware, according to what... Uh, Elizabeth Moss and others have told me the first library, at least in the Hudson Valley, to have something nice. like this. Um, I do know that others are working on it. I received a call from a gentleman whose name unfortunately escapes me, but he was from up in Hudson, New York, up in Ulster County, and they were trying to establish a tool library up there, not directly through a library, but they were, as an independent organization, trying to create one and then partner with the library to track the circulation of the items. And there's no deposit required on no, no, no. The only thing we require for checking out these items is we do have a um, a waiver and indemnification form, and we also have a uh, borrowing and use policy, and we ask each person who checks out one of our items to sign those forms, and we keep them on file until the items are returned, just so that we uh, have that in the event anything happens. Uh, just, it just protects the library, it protects you, it just keeps everything in order, so we do ask for that. But otherwise, no, it's simply uh, the items go out, they go out for one week period, there is a, I believe, Meg, is it a $2 a day if they're late, I believe? Yep. Yeah, $2 a day if any of the items are late. Uh, we generally don't allow renewals on the items, but if, you know, if it should come up that there's a situation, we're willing to work with people on that on a case-by-case -case basis. I have a question. Yes. Do you clean the items when they come back? Um, part of our policy, the borrowing and use policy, is that we request that the items be cleaned before they are returned. No, I Um, I mean, we look at each item as we're checking it in to make sure all the pieces are there. If we see something is messy, we're certainly going to clean it. Okay. So absolutely. It's not, that, not a standard policy that we clean everything, but since we do have to make sure all the pieces are there and check the items, we're not going to leave anything messy if we see that. I just wondering, because there's certain garden items that people are worried about transferring to, you know, plant diseases. Mm -hmm. So you might want to tell people they should wipe things they borrow down when they take them. Okay, we'll make a note of that for the gardening items that we should, we can wipe those down. We have um, we have sterilization wipes and some other things that we normally use to keep things clean around here. We can always wipe things down when they come back. That's a good idea. All right, so um, we talked about the physical um, items. So going back to what I was saying before, if anybody has any suggestions for, um, like if we're getting items that are going to be used for a certain repair, um, does anybody have any suggestions for, say, um, other than uh, we do have uh, Elizabeth's book, Repair Revolution, outside of that one? Um, yes. Well, people have to put replace their screens sometimes, and there's a spline tool for that. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And a... Uh, I guess you already have wire cutters on it. I believe we have wire cutters. cutters. It's, it's either in the main tool bag or separately. I'm not sure which, but we definitely have them. Yeah, we do have one generic toolbox that comes with a set of standard tools, hammers, flat and Phillips head screwdriver, a tape measure, things like that. So I'd, at the very least, there might be wire cutters in there. If not, we might have a separate wire item. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. I, I noticed you had the canopies that people would do an outdoor activity. If they're having a party, they might need extra... Um, Trash cans. Yeah, like one big trash can, maybe. 
we got something we at least consider just having one large plastic trash can that we could, you know, we could rent out. That's an idea. That's true. If, if somebody, if they're having a big group and they've, you know, depending on what they have, if they've only got a small can from their kitchen or something, mm -hmm. especially if it's, you know, maybe somebody who regularly brings their bags directly to the transfer station and doesn't have garbage pickup at their home or something, that's a, that's a valid point. Mm -hmm. That's you definitely... Know, one thing I was put on my garden list that would also tie into this, you know, they make up what are called pop-up bags. You know what I'm talking about? Um, I think so. You mean like the like the paper bags for the waste, you mean? They make bags that it has a spiral piece of metal and they're made out of various materials and they they go down flat. Oh, okay. I, I think I know what up. you're talking about, yeah. And people use them for uh, leaves, things like that. But those could be good and you could use them for parties and stuff like that. Too. That's that's true. They don't take any storage. Yeah, that, that might work better than a full garbage can. That's yeah. a good idea. Disposable. Yeah, right. definitely. Plastic bags. Plastic. No, yeah, once I mean once it's opened up, you could put a regular garbage bag inside it. It's yeah, just it's plastic. sort of it's just yeah. a garbage can that folds down, which I I think it's only made of like a nylon material, the isn't nylon, it? There's different materials and different strengths, but those might um, for people who don't want to buy them when they regularly. Barrel's gonna be a little tough carrying up and down the stairs. Right. Yeah. So the pop-up one that'd be better, and because they're small and fold down, we could potentially get more than one if we thought it was if there was demand. So that's not that's a good idea. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, Terry Lancelain with the um, Forward Repair Cafe. Um, I know we use them a lot at our house as levels different types of levels. Um, I know we have at least a small level, I believe, in the uh, that overall toolkit there, I think. I think that's why it's not mentioned separately, but uh, we could certainly get a larger separate level. Might not be a bad idea. I think, okay, I didn't see it, but if it's there... Yeah, I think, I think it's in that, that where it says toolbox with commonly used tools. I think it's included in that. We don't have the each item in that listed on there, so that's okay. uh, about as that. But I think that's there's at least one in there, but a separate one wouldn't be a bad idea. Well, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, one thing that I know uh, tends to come up uh, that I've heard a lot comes up at the repair cafe is the repair of lamps. Are there any like tools for that 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 are really needed, or anything anything in terms of electrical work, things like that? Is there any tools that we could carry that would help with that? Does anybody know? Or the repair of lamps are very simple. So you just use a screwdriver. Oh, okay. Dry repair pliers and a, a continuity tester. You're all oh, okay. Continuity. Well, the parts. The parts My parts, yeah. yeah. I'm talking about diagnosis. Mm. Right, okay. You know, one thing that's really great that happens at the repair cafe is they sharpen your tools for you. Mm. Now, I know it would be, you'd have to get someone from the repair cafe to agree to do it. I know they did it at Albert Wisdom, I missed it. Mm -hmm. But to have a workshop or a, you know, meeting where you show people how to sharpen the tools, and then they, you would have the um, tool sharpening materials here. Does that, there's lines that you tool sharpen. Okay, that's that's not, that's a good idea. I know. Fred. Oh, yeah. Fred. Fred. <laughs> yeah. Well, tying into that, um, what, uh, well, go ahead first. Just to expand, I, I do a lot of sharpening at the repair cafe. I'd be mm -hmm. more than glad to come on my, okay. on my, uh, on a, uh, my retired days off to come help with a little repair, you know, okay. maintenance yes. and sharpening. That's great. That's something I was going to bring. And I've also, uh, Elizabeth had us go give a presentation at the Warwick Library right. one time when we came and we did a demonstration. Okay. And I, I could do that for you, that's too, if you'd like. That's why I'm saying like. a demo, so people can learn how to do it themselves. Yeah, that's that's something we'd love to have. Um, if any of you are particularly skilled in any given repairs that might involve the tools we have, um, if you have availability, we'd love to come in and record like maybe a five minute video of the repairs being done, just an idea of how these things work and make those available on our YouTube channel so we could recommend them to people who might be checking out the tools of the other items for those repairs to give people an idea of how to use these items for people who might be interested but might not possess the knowledge of what to do with the tools once they have them. So that would definitely be something we'd love to do. Also, um, Joan, I don't know if something you and Elizabeth can discuss, but I mean, if you're ever interested, I know you're normally at the Warwick Senior Center. We'd love to have the Repair Cafe, you know, have an event here if, if that's ever something you'd be interested in doing. I don't know, if, you know, what kind of space the requirements are and what your setup is, but we'd love to have you here. We have this space here, and we can also rent the Senior Center next door if that's preferable. So 
we have options if that's something uh, we could ever do in the future. Well, we could take a consensus now of our repair cafe people since the majority of them are here. Oh, okay. What do you people think? Next door is as big as the Warwick building, the it's senior center. To do in here because we don't have to worry about weather and the setup and repairs inside are much better. Okay. And yeah, we, we, yeah, we can, need some electrical outlets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lighting is important. Right. Okay. Yeah, we can absolutely we can absolutely reserve the senior center. The village makes that available to us pretty liberally, as long as it doesn't interfere with the three seniors groups that meet over there. So we could definitely organize something like that uh, in the fall or whenever it uh, whenever it works out. So just um, if you or Elizabeth wanted to get in touch with me about the schedule of when you were doing the events, we could try to work something out later. Okay. I do have a question up front. Go ahead. Warwick requires an insurance uh, certificate. Yes, our, our, the village would require us to provide them with one for the usage of the senior center, so. So it would be under the library that you're the getting the certificate? Well. Oh, they, oh, you need one as well? Okay. Do you have one? You, do you have to present one for a warrant, don't you? Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay, yeah, so the, the village would like. As well. Yeah. I'm Meg, I'm the library director. Oh, Meg is the library director, by the way, yeah. So okay, so. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so you would. So, so we provide one to the village, but they probably want one from you as well. Yeah. Oh, is he the chiropractor? Yeah. yeah. Oh, neat. I saw him. Yeah. And yes, we would also, not only Vera made a good point about recording, but um, like Fred, right? We definitely help host a program of any sharpening, any demonstration live as well. Yeah, well, that's what we yeah, did. Yeah, uh, yeah that no. would be great too on any. We didn't really let people do hands-on. Like, no, I could see at, that. At the, <laughs> repair, at the repair cafe, we actually encourage people to do, do the repair. Mm -hmm. Which uh, Absolutely. Would, because you know, liability if somebody cuts themselves or something, but I'd be more than glad to come and do it. Yeah, that would be, that would both, both recorded and live. Yeah, retirement, you know, I need yeah, to do. Yeah, we can have the live program and then just record a portion of it, certainly, yeah. We, um, for the sake of everybody's schedule, is, um, while we're willing to work with everybody, generally speaking, programs aimed at adults we normally do on either Wednesday and Thursday nights or on Saturdays, so depending on everybody's free schedule. And we could certainly work around that if somebody wanted to do something on another night, we could try to make that work. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Aaron, the waiver that you're saying yes. relieves the library of any, uh, 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 like, say you rented a chainsaw, which mm -hmm. frightens me already. Um, do we have a know. chainsaw? I don't think we have that yet, do we? Um, I think we have some big tools. One. So yes, yeah. no. it's a pretty long waiver. We, we, have, we, have, we have some other saws, yeah. yeah we did, we, we saw, did that's enough. I yes. swear I thought I... Yes. Did you say you had a table saw, too? Uh, we have... We, uh, yeah, we have, we have several large saws down there. We have a, saw. We have a circular that. saw. We have... Um, well, this, this is what makes me nervous, because, you know, um, is the waiver enough? You know, everything is so litigious. According, according to our attorney, it is. That's all okay. we can say. All right, then. You can't you get a waiver against stupidity, so... Unfortunately, yeah. no. You know, so you yeah. know, you shouldn't have. Yeah. yeah if, you'd like to, if you'd like to read it, this oh, is the thank waiver. Oh, Okie dokie. You can feel free to pass that around if you like. That is the waiver that we uh, require everyone to sign for the majority of items in our library of things. If they're checking out something like a board game, we're not going to worry about that too much, but... <laughs> yes, Diane. Yeah, that. I would, we yeah, did that. Yeah, I, the repair cafe people did that. Yeah, that I can tell you, I, I would love somebody to teach me how to sew a button on something because I'm losing buttons all the time. Oh, oh. <laughs> I love that your mother won't do it. Handy, handy button here. Yeah, they have it all yeah. seen on TV. Yeah. You know, to put your button. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, giving a little um, sewing lesson to people. Yeah, I would. Oh, you know, this looks very yeah. professional. Yeah, like I said, our yeah. attorney, like I said, our attorney helped us work this up and made yeah. sure that it was up to snuff. We have, we have, uh, like I said, two things. We ask everybody to sign that as the waiver, and then we also have our uh, borrower's uh, agreement and use policy, which basically st stipulates what the rules of the collection are. Uh, borrowers have to be over eighteen years of age. Uh, they must sign both of these forms. The patron, by taking possession of any item, is certifying they're capable of using that item in a safe and proper manner. 
Uh, only the patron is authorized to use the tools and equipment. They shouldn't let anyone else use one. the items uh, without the express written permission of the library. Uh, they could borrow up to two tools or pieces of equipment at a time. Uh, all items have to be returned to us by the close of business on the due date. Uh, you can't put any of them in the book drop. They have to be brought back in to us. <laughs> You'd be surprised what people try. Can't drop it off in another library. <laughs> Yeah, no, we, we don't want to deal with the courier drivers bringing that stuff from library to library. They'll kill us. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, everything goes out for a period of seven days, but again, we're willing to negotiate potential extensions on the loan uh, on a case-by-case -case basis if needed. Um, anything that's returned late will accrue $2 a day in fines per item. And as with anything in our collection, if a patron goes over $10 in fines, that does block their card and they won't be able to use it for anything until they pay that down. Are there, are there many items that require gasoline on that list? Um, I don't think we have anything that requires gasoline on Chainsaws our list. Don't require um, no, the saws are uh, plug-in. They're electric. Oh, electric, good. Yeah, it's, a, it's not a physical problem. chainsaw. It's really more just a circular saw, the kind you would use on a workbench or like in your garage. Right. We have a cu So we don't have anything that requires gasoline because yeah. storing it in the basement and everything, that would be a big problem for us. So that's not something we could really get into, unfortunately. Yeah, one thing I'll mention, Rich White from the Warwick Repair Cafe, I'm one of the coaches. I usually repair bikes or wooden things, but what I wanted to point out is we do not repair any gasoline motors or diesel motors because we're in, just like your senior center, we're inside. Mm -hmm. So we have to reject those. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, so, um, let's see, notes here that, um, you know, if, if something comes, if items are severely overdue, then we may replace the items, and the item may be billed to the person who has not returned the item. Okay. Um, let's see. We also reserve the right to use appropriate steps to retrieve unreturned tools and equipment or unpaid fines or fees. And we also reserve the right to forgive fees and fines in special circumstances if we so desire. Uh, we shall uh, Tools and equipment sh uh, not returned shall be deemed severely delinquent if they're not returned within two weeks of the due date. So if they're kept out more than two weeks past when they're due, then they're considered delinquent. Um, you can uh, call us in advance if you'd like to make sure something's here and you want us to hold on to it uh, for you. Uh, we can do that. If we do that, put aside that for you. We'll hold it for three days. Um, so you can say, if you know you're going to need something on, say, Saturday, you can call us on Thursday and say, hey, I'm going to need that tool on Saturday. Could you hold it for me? And we'll do that for you. Uh, we do reserve the right to make exceptions to that policy if, uh, if it's needed. Uh, again, we don't renew the items uh, except in special circumstances, case-by-case -case basis. Uh, we're not responsible for manufacturing defects in the quality of workmanship or materials inherent in any borrowed tools or equipment. Uh, we're not resp uh, also not responsible for defective conditions. Uh, patron agrees if any item becomes unsafe or in a state of disrepair, they immediately will not use it anymore and they'll contact us and bring it back. And uh, the patron acknowledges the importance of bringing such conditions to the prompt attention of the library. Uh, tools and equipment are to be returned in the same or better condition than issued, barring normal wear and tear. And it's in bold right here. All tools and equipment must be returned clean. So that's definitely in there. And uh, Patron agrees to report any damage to us immediately. They agree to pay for loss or damage to the item if it comes up. And further agree to accept our assessment of the condition. If they return it and they say it's okay, but we say it's damaged, our assessment is what will apply there. Uh and uh, they further agree to uh, assessment of fair restitution for any damage, soiled condition, a delinquency over the item, anything like that. And uh, we reserve the right to refuse the loan of any item at our discretion, should there be any particular reason we feel that we shouldn't loan a given item to a given individual. And we just ask them to sign that they have read this policy, they agree to it, and signature date and print name on there. So that way we uh, have all that so we know that everybody has agreed to it, and that keeps us covered in the event that anything should happen. Currently, uh, restrict lending of tools to library card holders. Yes, anybody who checks out the item must have a valid card. It does not have to be a Florida card. Mm -hmm. It can be any card from an RCLS library, which is any library in Orange, Rockland, Sullivan, or Southern Ulster County. Yeah. As long as it's a valid adult card over 18, then they can check out the items. They just have to be willing to drive here to pick it up and bring it back because unlike, say, our books and DVDs, which can be returned to any library and they'll send it back to us, we didn't want to try that with the tools. Mm -hmm. Yes. I just have a question on who is going to <clears throat> assess the condition of the tools that are brought back? 
In other words, if you take a shovel, you break the handle, that's obvious. Mm -hmm. But if you take a certain kind of other tool, there might be damage that a librarian is not going to know. That's true. I mean, we're going to do the best that we can. Uh, whoever is checking in the item upon return will be looking over the item to see uh, the condition. If they have a question about anything, they can always leave it to be assessed by someone else. If there's something that looks really strange that we're not sure about, we'll definitely restrict the circulation. And we'll probably have our... Uh, uh, one of our volunteers was with the Friends. Bob Persing is an incredible handyman. That man can fix anything on the face of the planet, I swear to God. And we'll probably have him look it over if we have a question about something. So Just, you do have somebody that Yeah, okay. absolutely. I thought he was going to be here tonight, but he must not have been able to make it. But yeah, he has, he, he's repaired as I think he's... I built expansion to repair shelves, put wheels on things. He worked for IBM for many years and can repair computers. Like is he a volunteer here? He is a volunteer. Yeah, he's a volunteer to member. To he's a volunteer to member of our <laughs> friends group. I'm not surprised. I would have too. We also encourage the girls up at the ladies at the desk if there's one there. If look at the cords. Look at you know. Just look it over before you you, you take it back. Say, you yes, just especially plug, the plug cords. You know, someone sliced the cord or something. Well, that's, um, that's to that take happens. it. Yeah. Yes. I could imagine. Um, so we do, um, they do have to spend a few minutes looking at the item as they check it in. That's um, one of the Yeah, a, a part of the way we facilitate that is for a lot of the items, anything that has more than one piece, like I was like I said, if somebody brings back a rake and something's bent or broken, you're going to see that. But for anything that has multiple pieces on it, oftentimes the individual pieces have their own barcodes. So for example, I had, um, I had a gentleman here earlier. Um, his name escapes me. He's actually the uh, the Warwick Info site gentleman who uploads the videos for uh, many of the Warwick organizations. Peter, does that sound right? Um, anyway, the guy at the Chamber of Commerce might be. I'm not sure. He gave me his card. I just know that he he, he runs the. Uh, he said he uploads the videos for the uh, for the Garden Group among others, and um, he he checked out our um, metal detector which we are one of the items on there and that has several pieces. So we have on the tag four different barcodes for the different pieces that each have to be checked in and checked out. So that requires the staff members who are checking the items in and out to check and make sure each of those pieces are there before they check that item out or back in. Also, any item that comes with an instruction or a book that will have its own barcode as well. So that kind of forces us to make sure that all the pieces are there as we're checking things in and out and to at least give them a once over to make sure that things are in generally good condition. What has been the response to this whole program? Um, every response, everything that we've heard from everybody is they love the idea. People are very enthusiastic. Uh, a lot of the items, as I said, we've only been doing this for about eight to ten months. and that long. Yeah, uh, about that long. We started off with some basic items that we've been expanding ever since. Um, Werner's and Roe Brothers have been very helpful in providing a lot of the items at a, at a good rate. We bought certain other items off of Amazon that we weren't able to get from them. And the response overall has been very positive, but I think the combination of the fact that it is still kind of new and that we're just coming out of a pandemic. I think word hasn't quite gotten around to everybody that we're doing this yet. Um, I make sure to mention it to everybody who comes in to sign up for a card or seems new to the area. I always give them one of these. And so we're, we're definitely trying to get the word out there on our social media. Um, we did at the last Repair Cafe event, we had a big sign and some of these flyers, which I understand you got a very good response to that, Joan. Is that right? Yeah, all the, all the brochures went. So that was very good. Where are you advertising, Baron? I didn't know anything about this. Yeah, um, like I said, we did it there. We always advertise on our social medias, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, we did have it in the uh, the Warwick Valley Dispatch. We always put all of our information in the newspaper, also the advertiser. You had it in the advertiser? We've had some articles put in when we when we um, kicked off the, uh, the tool library. We did it. We had a nice press release um, go out on all the tools. Um, we, we don't do advertising like regular, you know, news, you know, like store advertising, but it, um, we're trying to tie it in with our patrons with a lot of programs. So what um, we did um, to help push it out with our patrons is um, do programs with some of our, our, one of our children's programmers did a whole sanding and she had all the sanding tools out and we had, so we had everything on display for them to use it as well. Um, it is um, regularly pushed out on all our social media um, sites. And it is also included um, anytime we put it together a kit for anywhere we're going. Um, we just did a big um, card sign up with the children over at Golden Hill. So all the sorts of flyers go out with all sorts of, um, with all our, with all the parents. Um, it's, it's, it's coming around slow. Um, of what's going, going out a lot in the summer has been our party game collection, our camp jam, um, 
Yeah, we just got many of those Board items. Hole, yeah, there's a badminton, volleyball Jenga. set, giant Jenga. The giant Jenga went out with the with the uh, canopy earlier this yeah, afternoon. The canopy, so that's been a big push. Um, we'll do seasonal uh, pushes out on it. Um, bakeware, obviously, at, at the holiday time. Yeah. And when we got that, when we got the bakeware in between Miss Beth, who does the elementary programs, and I, who do the team programs, we each did some baking events with those groups. I did uh, little loaves of banana bread that came out delicious. Um, and with all, <laughs> and with a lot of those baking items, we do include some recipe cards with them, by the way. So if you check out one, of, we have a, the little quarter loaves. We have the more the one with the four loaves, and then we have you know full pans. Um, we do include recipes, uh, rec some suggested recipes for those. So. Uh, Yeah, and any kind of informational media that would teach people how to use these items or suggest ways to use these items to do specific repairs or accomplish other specific things, we'd love to enhance our collection with those as well and then include that uh, a notice with the item to make them aware, hey, we also have this book that goes with it if you're interested. Yeah, a, a book is handy because even if you look on internet, you know, if you YouTube. Google something, uh, it's not the same as having a, a page in front of you. Manual. you keep right. Keep back watching, at. It again, watching yeah, it again. Yeah, exactly. Watching it so, again. Yeah, yeah, paper literature is handy. But if you're under 40, you can't read the instructions. Oh. <laughs> no wonder I have so much trouble. <laughs> the last resort, read the instructions. There you go. I have a question. Have you um, put anything on some of the social media sites like We Are Warwick? Um, we're so always looking to, uh, to share our... So we Are Warwick? We Are Warwick. Organizations, companies, uh, and even retail stores that do rent out tools. Mm. So when you consider what to put in your inventory, uh, in other words, like something like Lowe's, you can rent a table saw. So there's no reason for you to consider something like that because it's a, it's a rentable item. Or I know Greenwood Lake they rent they they loan out fishing poles. We have several of those also. I know, but I'm <laughs> saying you know. So when you work on your inventory, you keep in mind that you can. Uh, go to AutoZone and have your battery tested. Mm -hmm. You know, so you don't. You know, just so th there's are other organizations, and now a lot of those are retail, so you're paying for right, it. and that's the, kind of the you key know, difference. So the, yeah, the niche here is that it's it's a free. Item. It's free, exactly. I'm just talking about the you know, the kind of big items that you really don't need. If somebody needs a backhoe, they're not going to come here. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> well, that's the problem. The librarian has to drive it up. It's my garage. <laughs> well, we got that car code reader for your. Um, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can, you can, like yeah the orange. You can plug it into your car, and it'll give you an error code, and you can look it up in the little book to see what's wrong with your car if your check engine light is on. Yeah, they did. Since all cars have internal computers now, if they if the check engine light comes on, it registers a code with the internal computer, and that's the same thing that they'll use if you go to a mechanic shop to initially diagnose what's wrong, so they know what to look at. So you can get one of those, you plug it in, it comes with a little book that tells you what the codes are, it gives you like a three letter code or a three number code, and you look it up and then it at least gives you an idea of what's wrong with it so you know how to approach it. There are some things where it's a simple enough thing that you don't necessarily need to get a mechanic involved, you know, charging you hundreds of dollars to get it fixed. My, my father's had one of those for years, it's wonderful. Sometimes it's just the gas cap with tire pressure, so easy. Yeah, exactly, it's the gas cap's not on or the tire pressure or right. something, there's all kinds of possibilities. Um, 
Here's another, we don't have this here, but this is just another fun uh, Library of Things type item that uh, I wanted to bring up here. Sarah, you in particular might be interested in this one. This is over at the Newburgh Library. They recently did this, but they have a seed library over there oh, yeah, yes. where they are. Uh, they actually repurposed this, is, and this is part of that upcycle thing. This is an old card catalog that they had sitting around in a storeroom, and they actually repurposed this by having some wonderful local artists come in and paint it up and make it look real nice. And they've got it set up where the top ones that are coated green and the bottom ones are coated yellow. One of them is just fruits and vegetables, and the other one is flowers. I can't remember which one is which. We just started one of those. Did they? Yeah. Oh, excellent. Good. But that's the kind of upcycling because they took that old card catalog and they found another use for it because mm -hmm. the card catalogs are really electronic these days. Most places don't use these kind of physical units except for things like we have one behind our desk that holds all the registration cards for the patrons, so we have the physical records of that should we need them. But that's another kind of great, uh, kind of great upcycling. I know they're partnering; with, they partnered with an organization to be able to do that. I don't remember the name of it. They had an organization where you register with their website and they vet people who bring in the seeds and anybody can come and take seeds. I guess is the idea. So they can keep track of. This is pretty a grassroots thing. They just put the word out. Oh, okay. If you have seeds you don't need to bring them over. They just started this, so I don't know. Okay. You know, so they'll probably grow. Yeah, that's that's good to know. That's there though. In conjunction with so many farming gardening tools we can mention. By the way, we you know Warwick has a seed library if you're looking for something to plant, depending on what you're doing. That's good to know. All right. So uh, we've covered a lot of the ground that I wanted to cover tonight. Does anyone else have any other questions, comments, suggestions, anything that we'd like to, uh, anything else to add? Yes, Diane. How about binoculars? What if we had binoculars? That's a good idea. Yeah. Actually, if I can offer a suggestion, if we're if we're if we're gonna do that, um, that going back to my friends over at Newburg, I, I substitute for them sometimes, which is why I'm familiar with their collections. They actually, I think they got it through a grant, but they actually have a, uh, they have uh, hiking backpacks that you could check out, and they actually come with binoculars and like a first aid kit and a bird watching guide and things like that. So even if we didn't go quite that far, if we had one that maybe just you know one pack that just had you know maybe a couple of different pairs of binoculars, maybe it had a you know, a bird watching book that we one or two bird watching books we could put in there, things like that. We could rent that out as a as a nature kit of some kind. That might be fun. We do we do have a lot of backpack kits we rent out. They're mostly aimed at children, normally for the preschool age range. Uh, they come with a variety of uh, books on a particular theme. Let's say maybe the theme is animals or nighttime or something like that. And it comes with three or four books toward that theme. Usually a craft item, sometimes something they can keep. Um, for example, I know we have one that's all about like construction vehicles. It comes with a plastic hard hat that they can keep mm -hmm. and things like that. So mm -hmm. we definitely have a lot of those. And we recently got some through a, a grant from our library system. We added some that are just more of a uh, more of a general uh, preschool kit that come in a backpack. There's one that uh, has plastic food in it that's all about like nutrition, learning about food. There's one that's about counting, uh, A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, things like that. So those are very popular among the younger age group. We also have, uh, that we bring out during the summer, we have vacation packs. It comes with, uh, again, it's a theme aimed at the slightly older crowd. Like, for example, maybe it's dinosaurs. It comes with, like, three or four chapter books aimed at dinosaurs, maybe some coloring pictures, a little game thing, and uh, they can be rented out, too. So those are also a lot of fun. Not officially listed in our library of things, but something else that we do have available. So, yeah, that's definitely something with a binoculars kit. That's definitely a, a good idea. It's something we can uh, approach. And if anybody comes up with any other ideas, please feel free to let us know. Um, you can always... Uh, yes, Fred. No, just a curiosity. Uh, you have... You're talking about, like, backpacks with certain items already in there. Mm -hmm. Do you have any... Cause, because you're talking about individual items, like you only rent two items. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say, for instance, you're doing gardening, uh, and all you have now is a shovel and a rake, but you might need a hoe or something. Do you have, like, a, like a try trifecta package where you can you know <laughs> we, would, we would we would expand you know, say, say, you know, a trifecta case. package yeah, yeah. I mean, something like that I mean, you know, we don't have case that by case. groups like that yeah. but I would say um, like we would extend the um the, the time that you can we loan it out, we, we could, would extend. Yeah, because only do yeah. half, 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 half the work. Yeah, it's job. The, so we would expand. We, we do have the flexibility to allow more than two items. Yeah, time. generally with any of our policies, <laughs> yeah. they're policies for the sake of having a, a baseline to go with, but we do reserve the right to alter our policies on a case by case basis. I think it, someone did take out, like, the same thing they were doing. Yeah, the whole, it's like, you know, yeah. Was, it, the whole, was, it, was, it, was it Martha? <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else? Because you can make it like an, uh, like a 
condo apartment pack, yeah. you know. Yeah, something that things, you know, like I one of our items that somebody might need but might not have room for and that sort of a thing or, or uh, yeah. Again, you know, things like bench grinders. You know, I mean, I I know how stifled I am. You know, compared to what I have my house, I mean, yeah. I had stuff. But that's, yeah. Uh, well, even uh, even if you're not necessarily using a um, you know, like this. Yeah, the the saw horses, but I know also you can get just like a collapsible little workbench too that has clamps and everything built well, on yeah, it too. Uh, workmate made one, which is very handy because it also has the capability <laughs> of clamping. Ah. Uh -huh. You know, you can turn handles and work, clamp work, things. Work, work, work. Well, this. Uh, Workmate was one of the names. It's, yeah. uh, they all have them now. Yeah, I, I, I have something right similar in my garage. I can take a picture and show you what we're talking about later. How about a digital camera? I mean, I know everybody has cell phones with their picture-taking ability. But that's but true. Not everybody. I can attest my father personally. My, my father will not use his phone as a camera for any reason. He says, that's not what it's for. It's a phone. It's for making phone calls. I'm going to use my camera. So that's, that's his choice. I respect it. But yeah, certainly there are some people... Uh, who might want to do that. I've actually seen, um, it's kind of interesting, I, I've seen a lot of, uh, some stories floating around Facebook recently about um, a lot of, like, disposable cameras coming back into style, too, which surprises me. But is there any place that develops 35 millimeter anymore? Um, some of the drugstores still do it. If you go to CVS or something, some of them do still offer that. They have to send it out, but they'll do it. You have to do mail order. New York labs and stuff? That's yeah. I always yeah. use. It was beautiful. This stuff was really good. I digress. I digress. <laughs> but yeah, something something like that, like a digital camera set, might be good. Maybe if you're gonna do that, maybe something like a digital cam. Maybe if you do a, maybe make, if we do it as a set, like it comes with a digital camera and then maybe a tripod and maybe you know some other accessories that go with it. Just even if they're not gonna use the camera itself, the rest of the accessories might be helpful depending on what they're doing. And a class on photography. <laughs> I mean, we can do it. I, I mean, we can do it. I mean, yep. we've done it before. We can ask Adam Fernandez. Uh, we can. This is actually what this is. This is designed to hold either a cell phone or a tablet, so we could get another one of these easily. We have the record of what we bought it on Amazon, so yeah. we could easily get another one of those. Party, they want to tape the party. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very good idea. Yeah, the tripod's a great idea. Absolutely. Nothing else. That's a, that's a very constructive discussion tonight. If you do have any more ideas, you can certainly let us know. Um, yes. Let's call. Call. <laughs> Let's call. Let's call. Let's call. See, Fred, our minds are. Did Marie just turn that out? <laughs> are they you indicating they need to, to go? No. No. no, we're open till 8 o'clock. Well, no, but they want to out of here. Oh, the whole library just blacked out. I think the power went out. Oh, no. lose power this morning? No, we had power all day as far as. I didn't come in until noon, but as far as I'm aware, we didn't. Were you here this morning, Ron? Did we have power? Yeah. Oh, well, that's probably something to do with it. I'm going to cut this section out of the video when I edit it. I don't know. Well, I'm saying I'm thinking somebody hit a pole or something got knocked over. I'm assuming maybe yeah. maybe it's down that way. Maybe the lightning hit it. I don't know. Oh, we'll see. Yeah, that's true. Um, anyway, thank you for attending. If you have any other suggestions, please do let us know. You can email me. It's b angel a n g e l l at rcls dot org, or if it's easier, you can always just send it to fpl at rcls dot org. We'll get it there too. Um, or stop in and see us if you like, and uh, we'll absolutely be in contact with Elizabeth and Joan about arranging an event down here at the senior center. So that we can uh, help bring some of that, uh, some of those repairs to our, our local Florida community. Because I think, I think there's a lot of people here in Florida that don't necessarily go out to Warwick all the time. That I think you'd get an audience of some people that you don't necessarily see out there. So, oh, can I just say one yes, thing? Nanette. Like, like I never stop, right? Um, you know, when I hooked up with Joe, uh, with Elizabeth, and this whole too good to toss and all everything, the main mission that we didn't really cover tonight. Uh, yeah, we're repurposing things and refurbishing and da 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 to keep stuff out of landfills. Yes. Because we have no room. 
Absolutely. Yeah, I know. I, I live out in Newburgh, and the Newburgh transfer station stopped taking anything but household garbage like a year and a half ago. Oh, really? It's yeah. It's not like a dump anymore. I mean, it's the, you can bring your household garbage. They'll yeah. take the household garbage, but they, and anything that's like bulk construction, anything like that, it has to go out to either New Hampton or Middletown. Oh, New Hampton, yeah. They won't take it out in Newburgh anymore. So yeah, and that's exactly it. Is the more items that we can repair and upcycle, the less items have to end up in a landfill and right. potentially polluting the environment. Which, especially in this area, is important because of how much of our land is farmland and is needed to help produce food and to bring a livelihood to our farmers. So we definitely want to make sure that that's something we help preserve as well. And that's definitely, as always, the end result. The more we can combine our tools with the knowledge that's out there to help people keep those things. And especially because a lot of the replacement items you buy today are not necessarily of the quality of the items that might have been made, you know, even yes. 10, 15, 20 right. years ago. Uh, everything, you know, a lot of things today are made out of fiberboard. They don't last very long. So the, if you can repair a lot of those classic quality items, that's definitely something I think a lot of people are interested in being able to do so they don't lose out on a lot of those things. All right, well, I'd like to thank everybody for coming, the Repair Cafe, the Board of Trustees, the Garden Club, everybody who came out to help this evening. Thank you so much. Um, if we find, uh, you know, and uh, if we find demand or an idea for another one of these, we'll let everybody know. Uh, this video I will uh, edit and put, I might not get to it this week, but hopefully by next week I will edit this and put it on our YouTube channel. We'll share it out on our Facebook page and other locations. And I will also, um, I will email it to to Joan and Michael and they can share it with everybody else in the group so that they have it and I will send it out to you guys not that you don't know where our YouTube channel is but if you want it I'll send it to you as well thank you all for coming again if you'd like to take a bottle of water or a cup of iced tea to go please help yourselves also if you'd like to look at it um, this is our library of things guide we normally keep this sitting on our desk in there it has pictures of all the items if you'd like nice. to look at it feel free to take a look before you leave you can also check our website, floridapubliclibrary.org. All of our items are listed on the Library of Things tab right on the front page. All the items are there, and if you click on any given item, it will direct you right into our catalog where you can see if the item is checked in or not. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, Barry. Very good. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you for coming.